Hello Guardians, Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. If you're looking for a top tier Warlock build that's going to dominate the end game of Destiny 2, then you are in the right place. Today we're taking a look at the perfect stasis build for solo Warlocks in Destiny 2 Lightfall. This is a build that will provide you with superior survivability as you'll be able to control the flow of every engagement with your never ending supply of freezing abilities. Whether you're taking on champions in Grandmaster Nightfalls or other guardians in Trials, you'll be a force to be reckoned with. This build features the Osmia Monsi Exotic Gauntlets, which provides Stasis Warlocks with a second cold snap grenade charge. Cold snap grenades will travel 35% further and once a cold snap grenade hits or freezes an enemy you'll receive additional grenade energy based on the tier level of those enemies. This will provide 10% grenade energy for rank and file enemies and as much as 50% energy off of champions, mini bosses, and bosses. This provides stasis warlocks with the unique ability to spam an endless supply of grenades these grenades are going to freeze targets, and once targets are frozen, an additional Cold Snap Seeker will get generated, which will then seek out another enemy to freeze, granting us more energy in return. We're pairing these grenades with the Ice Flare Bolts aspect, which is going to cause an additional Seeker to be generated when a frozen enemy is shattered. Don't get me wrong, I love the performance of Bleak Watcher, as it gives you a stasis turret that slows and freezes multiple targets without you having to do anything, but with the addition of bonus cold snap seekers, you can keep an entire battlefield frozen while you remain in complete control. I find the glacial harvest aspect to be a perfect combination with this build, as it spawns stasis shards when freezing targets. You'll generate one shard for each rank and file enemy, while three shards will be generated from the stronger combatants. These shards will be especially beneficial to not only you, but your entire team, as these shards will provide 10 percent melee energy when collected by you or a teammate, with the larger stasis shards providing 50 percent energy. That's a lot of bonus melee energy that could help maintain invisibility for a void hunter, or shoulder charges for arc titans, or radiance from solar warlocks. These shards will also play a pivotal part towards our survivability, since all of our fragments function around the use of shards. Whisper of Chains is going to provide 10 bonus recovery points to help get our Rift energy back quicker, but most importantly, it's going to provide 40% bonus damage resistance whenever we are within 10 meters of a frozen enemy or a friendly stasis crystal. And at the same time, we'll have Whisper of Rhyme, which is going to grant health and an overshield as we collect shards. Each small shard provides 12 points of health, while larger shards provide 35 points. When at full health, these shards shards will grant a 100 point overshield instead. To ensure that we're able to collect all of these shards, we're using Whisper of Conduction, which is going to pull any of those shards that are within 15 meters straight to us. This also provides 10 extra points of resilience and 10 extra points of intellect. Since we'll be able to keep enemies frozen, we're using Whisper of Rending, which is going to provide our primary weapons with an additional 50% damage against frozen enemies. This is a damage bonus that will stack on top of any weapon surge mods to give you an incredible advantage against your enemies. There are several strong stasis weapons that synergize extremely well with how we have this build set up currently. Aegir's Scepter is a perfect example as it slows and freezes targets and it will also consume our super to amplify its damage even further. Further. The Verglas Curve and the Salvation's Grip both provide tremendous support functions with their ability to create stasis crystals. The Cryothesia and the Winterbite are both extremely fun exotics to use that offer unique ways of freezing targets. The Wicked Implement is a new exotic that came out this season that synergizes very well with this build as it slows and freezes targets on consecutive precision hits and has proven to be very effective against all three champion types. And then there's stasis legendary weapons that come with chill clip or headstone, both of which are excellent options to use with this build. And we can't forget to mention the Osteostriga. Its ability to poison enemies will be extremely cohesive when those enemies are frozen. When it comes to the best sources of stasis damage, I tend to lean towards the Reed's Regret Linear Fusion Rifle or the Cold Comfort Rocket Launcher with Bait and Switch or Explosive Light.
right. When it comes to our choice in armor mods, our main focus is to create orbs so that we can get armor charges to use for weapon surge mods. This means we're using siphon mods on our helmet and reaper mods on our class item. Since Osmia Monsi provides a secondary grenade charge, the benefits of grenade kickstart are pretty minuscule, and since the grenades themselves aren't as likely to be the final blow against enemies, there's no need in using firepower, so instead we're using bolstering detonation so that our grenades will generate additional class ability energy so that we can utilize the benefits of our rift far more often. Alternatively, Font of Focus would be a great choice for those who are running low on overall discipline, as it will provide you with bonus discipline while you have armor charges active. Our choice in chest mods will rely heavily on the activity that we're going into. If we need extra resistance towards any specific energy, then resistance mods should be utilized, but otherwise we're running with charged up so that we have additional armor charges that can be active at once. One mod will provide a total of four armor charges, and three will provide six total armor charges that can be active at once. On our boots, we're going with the maximum amount of weapon surge mods that can be afforded. While having three stasis surge mods would be nice, it can also be beneficial to split weapon surges between multiple energies based on what your weapon loadout is, or you can add in a holster mod so that you can reload stowed weapons. Along with the reaper mod on our class item, we're using powerful attraction so that nearby orbs will be drawn to us whenever we cast our rift. As I said at the beginning of this video, if you're looking for a top tier warlock build to dominate the end game of Destiny 2 Lightfall, then this is absolutely it. Everything you come in contact with is going to be frozen, and everything that's frozen is going to create shards, giving you health, resilience, and bonus damage, whether you're running solo or as a team. This is one of the most dominating Warlock builds currently available, and it doesn't even rely on any of the seasonal artifact mods, so it's definitely worth the time in trying out. And with that being said, if you've already given this Osmia Monsi Warlock build a whirl, then let us know down in the comments below what your impressions were. And while you're down there, let us know how you're enjoying Destiny 2 Lightfall so far. I will be leaving a Destiny item manager link in the description below, where you can also find a link to my discord that's going to wrap things up for today's video though but thank you as always for checking it out if you enjoyed and found it helpful then be sure to hit that like button below along with the subscribe button if you're new both are greatly appreciated and both really do help support the channel and until next time guardians this has been profane wishing you all some happy hunting